Bienvenidos a otro episodio de Activados. Gracias por estar entonizado con nosotros. Tenemos el honor y el gusto de tener a la hermana Damaris Arriaza aquí con nosotros en este día. Um, y en este episodio queremos saber un poco de usted, de su testimonio. Um, puede ser que la mayoría de las personas la conocen como la esposa del pastor Randy, pero... Queremos conocerla más usted. Um, yo la he podido conocer un poquito y usted es una persona muy hermosa. Um, queremos saber de su testimonio, um, de su niñez, para los que no saben. Uh, díganos un poco de cómo, qué, quién es Damaris. <risa> díganos quién es Damaris. Pues primeramente, muchas gracias por el privilegio de estar aquí con ustedes. La verdad es que es un honor. Um, pues yo fui criada en la iglesia toda, toda la vida. Um, y mis papás fueron llamados al ministerio, creo que tenía yo unos 8, 9 años. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was little. Cuando nos llamaron al ministerio, my parents estaban en, um, en Long Beach. Um, el pastor de ellos era el pastor Jairo Pérez en ese entonces. Y los mandaron al ministerio. And they gave them two options. Le dijeron, o quieren ir a, um, a Puerto Vallarta. México o Puerto Arturo, Texas. Y mi mamá fue muy específica. Ella dijo, si me puedo llevar el colchón, nos vamos a Puerto Vallarta, pero si no, nos vamos a Port Arthur. Entonces, esa fue la decisión. ¿Really? Yes. Así es como a mattress, sí, yeah, a mattress. Wow. Yeah. Y no, gracias a Dios, um, desde ese entonces fuimos a Port Arthur. And, y para mí en lo personal, yo sé que cada hijo de pastor tiene su experiencia, sí. pero para mí fue una niñez muy feliz, muy hermosa. Um, pude ver cómo rápidamente mis papás um, nomás llegaron ahí, llegaron a trabajar. Mm -hmm. Within a year, en menos de un año y medio, construyeron el templo en el que estamos ahorita. Oh, wow. Um, entonces, para una niña ver estas cosas y ver cómo tus papás aman tanto a Dios y lo entregan todo para Dios, para mí eso creó como un amor aún más grande. I love Jesus, pero mm -hmm. ver eso y ver cómo ellos amaban a Dios y todo era, you know, like, entregarse todo para Dios, eso hizo algo en mi corazón. Like, seeing them y, mm -hmm. y viendo las acciones de ellos y cómo hacían todo. Entonces, that to me was big. Y, y por los próximos año y medio, dos años, todo lo que llevaban de material, the crane machines, um, the wood, that was our playground. <laughs> so we messed up a lot of dresses yeah. <laughs> in that time area, but it was a very beautiful experience. Entonces, desde como los ocho y medio, nueve añitos, es que llegamos a Port Arthur. Y ese amor que usted tenía de niñez, did that translate over ya cuando llegó usted a su adolescencia? ¿Es lo mismo o fue diferente siendo, especialmente como hija de pastor? Creo que el amor siempre estuvo ahí porque, shout out a la Iglesia Quinta, ellos siempre hacían um, servicios de niños y siempre nos invitaban. Y creo que eso es algo muy fundamental. Cuando eres hijo de pastor y, y el, la prioridad de las iglesias es um, la escuela dominical, right. involucrar a los niños. Um, inducirlos a querer recibir el Espíritu Santo, a vivir una vida para Dios. That did it for me. Like, I've always told um, las maestras en la escuela dominical, if we can get these kids to love Jesus, yeah. if we can, like, sincerely get the babies to love Jesus, that's yeah. all we need. De, si amas a Dios, vas a encontrar tu propósito. Si amas a Dios, vas a conectar. Si amas a Dios, um, el amor que tienes para Dios, ese amor genuino de niño, te va a abrir el corazón y la mente a Dios. Y creo que eso fue algo muy fundamental, um, fundamental que, que pudimos experimentar, no solo en nuestra iglesia, sino que en las confraternidades que hacíamos. So I honestly think that that foundation that was set on me mm -hmm. fue lo que me ayudó later on in life. Like, like the, los promesas de Dios son, se cumplen. Sí. You know, instruye a niños en su camino y cuando fuere viejo no se apartará de él. That's I, I honestly, like, give all that credit. Mm -hmm. You know, las maestras, los mentores que tuvimos de, de niños, um, los que amaban a Dios. Y, and, like, they, no te miraban como un niño, te miraban como una alma grande. Like, you were a big little soul. And I love that. I love that. And I think sometimes in church, it's, it's very easy 
to get distracted by all the noise y todo el ruido que hacen los chamacos y sí. están corriendo, están, you know, pero I thank God por las maestras y por los hermanos que toman en serio su trabajo de traer estos bebés al altar, de traer sí. estos niños tremendos y, y encontrarles su propósito en Dios. And I think that that right there is what helped me and it translated, you know, when I was in my teen years. Honestly. Ese impacto a esa temprana edad. Yes. Ya, yeah, y yo creo que estás en lo correcto de que a veces hay personas que, o todos podemos hacer esa, tener ese pensamiento erróneo de que miramos a los niños y decimos, solo es un niño. Puede hacer, eh, no entiende y sí entiende. They son do. muy entendidos, son muy inteligentes y a esa temprana edad también pueden tener una relación con Dios. Que como dice usted, eso puede ser la base tan fundamental y tan importante que para muchos niños cuando entran a la adolescencia tienen un tiempo muy difícil en el camino de Dios. Pero si de la niñez ya estás bien fundamentado, nada te va, yeah. te va a sacudir, no te van a cambiar la mente, na, nada de eso va a pasar en el, en el transcurso que vas creciendo yeah. de edad. That's very true. That to me did it. You know, it tener una relación. And now that I have four kids, like, eso siempre ha sido, like, fundamental. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, encontrar dónde pueden caber en, en, ese, en ese círculo de la escuela dominical o de Dios. Mm -hmm. and, y mientras van creciendo, okay, you can't be in kids ministry no more, but now you're, you know, you're a preteen. Where yeah. can we fit you? Where can we put you? Y, y tiene que salir de ellos. Tiene que encontrar algo que les apasione. Y yo les digo a los muchachos, a los niños, a todos, you can find a spot. There's a spot everywhere. We have, una de las mujeres más lindas en la iglesia, tiene, I think, seven years old, siete añitos, and she takes her job serious. Ella toma su trabajo en serio. Um, hasta le hicieron una plaquita. <laughs> and I think it's so cute, but ¿qué niño quiere cirugiar? Mm -hmm. Like, no, no les interesa. Yeah. Pero it all goes back to, si sabes que a un niño mm. le interesa abrir la puerta, um, saludar a los hermanos, you know, llevarles la botella de agua. It's so cute to see her subir las escaleras y poner el pañuelo y poner la, la, la botella de agua. I'm like, oh my God, my heart. You know, yeah. because to me, um, ah, solo está poniendo agua. No, she has a servant's heart. Yeah. Desde chiquita ya tiene un, un corazoncito de, de servicio. And I think that when we have that, y, y podemos inducir a nuestros niños, everything else that happens down the line, or lo que llegue a pasar en tu niñez, las cosas buenas que has vivido con Dios outweighs las, las cosas negativas que has vivido como niño en la iglesia. Y creo que eso es muy importante. Y ya hablando de ya cuando usted entró a su adolescencia um, y siendo hija de pastor, um, ¿usted sintió que había una carga diferente por ser hija de pastor comparado a los hermanos de la iglesia o algo diferente de su familia? ¿O you just felt we're, we're exactly the same as everybody else? No, I think every pastor's kid knows that they live in a glass house. Oh, okay. Yo creo que todos los hijos de pastores saben eso que viven en una casa de vidrio mm -hmm. o de cristal y todo el mundo puede ver todo. Mm -hmm. Creo que eso es muy, um, es muy palpable, aunque no lo quieras pensar. Like, mm -hmm. you know. No te tienen que decir, no te tienen que um, corregir, tú sabes. So you had that in mind. Oh, yeah, all always. I always knew that I lived in a glass house and I just mm -hmm. tried to do the best I could living under a glass house. But I was very aware. <laughs> yeah. I was very aware. Yo sabía que si yo corría, pero el hijo de alguien más corría, el yo correr hacía como más perturbación mm. que el que otro niño corriera. You get what I'm mm. saying? Desde chiquita uno, uno ve eso. Y, y, y cuando vas en el tiempo de adolescencia, like, aún más. You know, porque ahora tu carácter está cambiando. You're going through, you know, hormone changes. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not the same sweet little girl. You know, sometimes you like, you know what I mean? Sale la actitud. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sale el carácter. <laughs> and everybody can do it, and it's okay. Yeah. But if you do it, you know. Did you ever feel like eso no es justo? It's not fair? Or it, it just, it is what it is? It is what it is. La verdad, like, estábamos muy ocupados que eso... La única vez que quise decir eso, mm -hmm. like, la respuesta fue, like, ¿y qué? Why were you doing it in the first place? So it's like, okay, never mind. 
I won't speak up on that no more. You see, now I let my kids talk, but back then... Oh, yeah, no. No, no. Y creciendo como hija de pastor, tenía usted en mente, decía, quisiera un día, cuando tenga mi familia, estar con un hijo de pastor o con pastor, o you were like, I, ra I would rather be married to someone that's just un hermano de la iglesia. I always knew I wanted to get married with somebody de la iglesia. Mm -hmm. Eso siempre lo tenía presente, pero un hijo de pastor no. No, <laughs> never. Were like, no. Okay, porque son like uh, porque a veces hay gente que dice, "Oh, porque yo crecí así, yo quiero estar con alguien también." Lo mismo, so stay, you were like, as long as they go to church, contar que van a la iglesia, yeah. we're good. Yo, yo, yo miraba muchas relaciones, you know, mm -hmm. que la hermana viene sola, o que um, amigas se casaban y los muchachos no iban a la iglesia. So I always knew that I needed somebody from church. Mm -hmm. But not just somebody from church, but somebody that wouldn't take me out of church. Because you can be in the same church. Y puedes haber tenido el mismo pastor, ido a las mismas clases de jóvenes, mm -hmm. habido criado en, en los mismos fundamentos, and still not be the same. Yeah. You know, like, your spiritual life be totally different. Mm -hmm. Y yo aprendí eso después, you know, like, con el tiempo. And, and, and that was a big hiccup for me, that part. <laughs> really? Yeah. Porque la, bueno, es verdad, alguien nomás porque va a la iglesia no quiere decir que estamos, o todos estamos en el mismo nivel espiritual y uno tiene que tener mucho cuidado sobre eso. Yeah. Entonces, cuando usted conoció a su esposo, ¿eso fue algo que, like, you were looking for that, or, or eso es lo que le atrajo a usted, ya cuando usted conoció al pastor Randy, or, it was just like, oh, well, we'll know, see. Knowing Pastor Randy was like a big Jesus moment for me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, n n because I, the, the reason I the reason I say that is because when I met him, things weren't okay for me. Okay. You know, I had went through I had went through a season where I didn't make the right choices. You mm -hmm. know, I, I didn't do things the correct way. So when I met my husband, you presentaron, I was like, oh, hey, God bless you. You know, because everything happens in convention, you know, oh. <laughs> <laughs> everything goes down in convention, yeah. you know, and his parents, nos presentaron, mis papás también, just like, hey, look, this is pastor son, and, you know, hi, okay, all right, yeah, but. So, espiritualmente no estabas en un buen lugar, or. Ni espiritualmente, ni, ni personal, emocionalmente, nada. emotionally, mm -hmm. I was a hot mess, I, I was a very broken girl when I met my husband. So, cuando yo lo conocí, yo sabía que, oh, man, this was it. Really? Yeah. I had one conversation with him. One conversation. And it's like, I knew. And it's like, it hurt my soul because I remember telling God, this was the guy. And I messed up. This was the guy. This is, this is who you had for me. But I did things wrong. And, and that's why, like, when people ask us about... You know, our story, I came, um, I came into a relationship broken, mm -hmm. you know, from a, a past relationship. Okay. I, I came into a relationship and, and I remember telling him, like, I can't have this conversation with you. I don't want to talk to you. We had just had one conversation. He was like, you're the girl I want to marry. Like, how do you know that? Mm -hmm. ¿Cómo, cómo, ¿Cómo uno conoce eso? Sí. Cuando ya has tenido una experiencia que te ha lastimado y te ha traído mucha confusión previamente. Mm -hmm. Pero ahí es donde yo entiendo que, que el Señor es tan bueno y que aunque tú creas que, que no mereces una, una, una historia de redención o redemption story o mm -hmm. second chance story, God is like, look, baby, I got you. Mm -hmm. I know you think you're living, you know, the worst situation right now. I know you think that you're not going to make it out of this one, you mm -hmm. know. But God it was so sweet, and he's always been so patient with me. Mm -hmm. He's been very patient with me. And even in the things that I thought that it wasn't worth me getting a second chance, God it was like, no, it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to place you with the correct person. And those things that you think are broken, no one's going to fix them but me. Mm -hmm. You know, God himself. And that's what I'm thankful mm -hmm. for. You know, and, and going back to, you know, when you were asking me about, you know, 
if, if there is a time in my in my youth, you know, we all struggle. Yeah. Well, I went through a season and it only took a year. <laughs> That's why I tell people like, you know, don't disconnect ever. Mm. If if at any moment you feel yeah, you know that you have a disconnecting moment, like push through it, push through it, get you a mentor, you know, hold on to the altar, don't mm. let go, don't double guess it, don't doubt it, you know, ask for help. Porque es más fácil desconectarse. Yeah. El momento que las cosas van mal, um, o creo que la emoción, la peor emoción es sentirse como que fallaste, a failure. Yes, yes especially when you're daddy's girl and daddy mm. doesn't think that you're ever done anything wrong. You know, like daddy loves his girl, you mm -hmm. know. And, and that's the thing that I think hurt me the most. No era necesariamente lo que yo había hecho, pero lo que me lastimaba más es que yo había um, comenzado algo hermoso para Dios. Mm -hmm. y, y, de, y de saber que, you know, in less than a year, I, I literally lost everything. I lost ministry. I lost privileges. And, and it was nobody's fault. It was my fault. You know, mm -hmm. it was my fault. And, and to know that um, I had given all of this up. And it was a simple sentence. I remember in that time, muchas um, amigas mías ya no estaban yendo a la iglesia. Um, that little group that you get baptized with is yeah. no longer walking with you. Mm -hmm. You know, y, y era algo que yo tenía que aprender. Y yo le doy gracias al Señor porque Dios es tan lindo que hay veces, you know, I like I tell my kids, I've gone through things so you don't go through them. Yeah. So when I see the red flags, I scream them loud and clear yeah. because I don't want my babies to go through what I went through. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's okay. I went through it. You're not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And um, and I remember there's a lot of red flags. There's a lot of red flags. Pero me hice como la que no escuchaba, la que no entendía. And there was one sentence that I said one day. And I, and I remember saying it, you know, out loud. I'm like, I'm tired of being perfect. I'm tired oh. of being perfect. Like, why can so-and-so do this? Mm -hmm. Why can so-and-so do that? Why pero, can this pero, pero. one, but not me? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And... And that was my problem. Those words should have never came out of my mouth. Porque sabes, you know, like, I've understood that there's power in our words. Yes. Cuando tú dudas, like, estás dando la oportunidad para que esa puerta se abra y comienza a entrar duda, comienza a entrar temor, comienza a entrar inseguridades, comienza a entrar. You start questioning everything, mm -hmm. even your faith. You start questioning everything. Mm -hmm. You knew that was black, but now you think it's gray. Yeah. You know, this is white, but no, I, I think it does a hint of pink. No, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The moment that you start questioning, the devil's like, oh, really? Okay, this is my, this is my opportunity, and I'm going to take it all. You know, más con dudar un poquito. That's it. No más. Because I go back and I'm like, what what did it? What did it? It was mm -hmm. that. It was that. Me saying I'm and I was by no means perfect. I was by no means perfect. But I did have a willing heart and a willing spirit. And um in that situation, um, like I, I literally lost it all. You know, and a lot of people like to say, Oh, I got church hurt. No, boo, you messed up. You know, a lot yeah. of people like, oh, the church hurt me. No, we have a lot of that. I, I you hear it all the time. And that makes me you have no you don't understand how much that hurts me because no, you don't victimize when you do things wrong. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as victimizing. Oh, the church hurt you because I don't know how they do things now. I know a lot of pastors just slap a little hand when you do things wrong. But back then, I remember with me. Oh, it was <laughs> Yeah. Child, they told me, um, va, um, vamos a tener una junta el domingo en la noche porque la hermana Maris um, cometió una falta y la vamos a presentar en frente de todos. Mm -hmm. That's how they did me. That's how it used to be. And I yeah. thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for that. And, you know, they told me and someone else to show up, you know, and the other person never showed up. You know, it was just me <laughs> just saying, you know, <laughs> only I showed up. You know, and I thank God because guess what? Um... I've grown from that. And that moment took me to value. And it's a horrible way of valuing something. Mm -hmm. But I thank God that my parents weren't the parents that sugarcoated things. Mm -hmm. My parents were honest and direct when you messed up. Mm -hmm. And they didn't they didn't try to like put a blind eye and no mi hija solo tuvo un desliz y vamos a dejarla que siga subiendo, no. 
my parents were very um very honest and very blunt about that and i thank god about that so much because i remember being in the altar one day and telling god god i'm in a hot mess and i don't know how you're going to do it but i need you to help me get out of this mess mm -hmm. i need you to help me like i sincerely need you to help me and lord behold you know somebody just shows up out of nowhere and, and and wants to start talking to me and i'm like no you just don't know you don't know like go back to your state <laughs> stay over there i'm sure there's a lot of good girls over there you have no business trying to talk to me mm -hmm. you have no idea because you felt like este no es el momento correcto no, no not, nada está correcto nothing is nada. right yeah. nothing is right like nothing is right I'm, I come, people call it baggage, but to me, I come with a, a beautiful baby. No. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so to me, it was like, you're trying to talk to a pastor's daughter that got pregnant out of wedlock, that has no business talking to nobody right now. She's in a mess, and I'm going to need you to leave her alone. Mm -hmm. And I did that, and I tried my best to get rid of this individual, but he did it. He didn't, you know, and um, and he persisted, he persisted, and he persisted. And I thank God for that because I remember when I told God, like, I messed up so bad. I don't know how we're going to get out of this. And within months, um, I had somebody in my home telling me, I don't know who's not trying to be responsible, and I don't know you, and I don't know too much about what's going on in your life, but... You're the person for me, and to me, you're it. Mm -hmm. And that, to me, brought healing. Because at this point, you know, when, when you allow your emotions to be put on a platter to be hurt mm -hmm. and to be misused, you know, you lose trust. That's a hard one. You lose trust. Yes. And um, and you don't believe in nobody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, and to me, I... I see my my marriage and my life and everything that came after that as a beautiful redemption story. Mm -hmm. That's how I choose to see it. You know, yeah, you know, the enemy thought that I was going to, you know, stay on the floor yeah. and, and cry about it and, like, not get up. But, you know, God connected me with the correct person. And he was willing to be like, yeah, that's my, and it wasn't his kid. <laughs> But he would tell everybody, you know what I mean? And till today, nobody can tell him any different. That's his baby. You know what I mean? And and, and I know it doesn't happen for everybody, but that's my personal story. You know, that as a PK, you can love Jesus so much. And in a moment of doubt or in a moment of you wanting to be like everybody else. I remember God telling me, like, literally, I heard him. I remember me, like, look at me telling it trying to go off on Jesus, telling him, but why everybody could do this and this and that, and nobody got pregnant. Mm -hmm. But you're not everybody. Yeah. Literally, I, I heard him tell me, but you're not everybody. You know, I had plans with you. I had purposes with you. Mm -hmm. And hearing those words from him got me to a very vulnerable point that I told him, well, redeem me, do what you got to do, and I'll go through whatever process I got to go through. But I promise you, when I get back up, I'm not ever going to fail you again. Mm -hmm. I'm not ever going to fail you again. I'm going to love you. And I'm going to cherish this love that we've had before. Mm -hmm. And I told God, take me back to her. And I was eight years old. And I fell in love with you. Mm -hmm. Please take me back to that state. Take me back to where I was eight years old. And, and my love and my passion was completely for you. Because I understood in that moment that my wholeness wasn't going to come from a love story. My wholeness wasn't going to come from me feeling that God brought, you know, a prince, a shining armor. No, mm -hmm. no era nada que ver con eso. Fue entonces en ese momento en un altar que yo entendí. I know you think you're all, you know, broken and stuff, but let me deal with you. Let me put you back together. And I know you're broken right now, but I'm connecting you with someone that's going to value you, that's going to cherish you, and it's going to, you know, help you 
-hmm. get out of this state. Now, I'll be honest with you, it took a while. It took a whole five years, (laughs) a whole five years, you know, for me to like forgive myself. Mm. God forgave me the moment that I told Jesus that I was sorry and I didn't want to, you know, open any more doors. God forgave me that moment. That moment he forgave me. But it took me five years mm. to um, to accept God's forgiveness. Mm. Because sometimes God forgives you, but you can't forgive yourself. Mm-hmm. And then when you can't forgive yourself, then you're holding on to too many things that now you're starting to project that everywhere else. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. because you don't feel confident. And I thank God for his patience with my life. And I thank God also for a patient husband, you know, that never stopped telling me, like, he never stopped telling me, like, I love you, I value you, I cherish you, and all these things. That that helped a lot, you know. But it's very easy to allow a situation that you did yourself yes. to just bring in a dip, deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Oh, hasta el momento que entonces, oh, no amas a Dios, ya no confías en la gente, ya, ya esto, ya el otro. No tiene nada que ver con nadie más. Pues comienza que, a no ver todo lo malo. Yeah. You just... Todo lo ves malo, la gente alrededor tuya son malas, nadie me quiere, nadie me valora, como es, no, ya no confío en nadie, no, hasta gente duda del perdón de Dios, and then you go, it, it, it just, tú miras todo lo negro, todo lo malo, y yo creo que también es porque es más fácil. It is. Es más fácil hacer eso. That's it. It is. It's easier to feel sorry for yourself. It's easier, it's, it's más, and it sounds harsh, mm-hmm. pero si sí es más fácil estarse uno en, 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 un, en un momento o un área negra, oscura, negativa, y no más dudar, y no más, es más fácil hacer eso. Yeah. Porque te tienes que también ser vulnerable para dar todo eso a Dios. Y eso es más difícil. Yeah. Because you're going to have to let go. Mm-hmm. Yo le digo a la gente, porque eso es algo que yo aprendí. A veces las cosas que nos están perjudicando, no sé por qué, pero tú estás agarrado a eso. Yeah. Porque esa es tu vida y tú sientes que eso es parte de tu historia. Y por una razón u otra, es difícil dejarlo ir. Es difícil, como dijo usted, recibir el perdón de Dios. It is hard. I don't know why. I don't know why either. Hard. You know, we were at a, at a PK's camp. And I went to that camp because I felt my brother needed it. Mm-hmm. You know how you always do stuff because, oh, esta persona lo necesita, entonces lo vamos a llevar <laughs> lo a la <laughs> yeah. yeah. I needed it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yo llevé a mi hermano porque yo sentía que mi hermano iba a beneficiarse mm-hmm. de este campamento, yes. you know. And um, keep in mind, okay, now mm-hmm. at this time I'm five years married already. Mm-hmm. Five, five, did I say it right? Five years? Five years. Okay. Um, so here I am at this camp with my brother. Y, y lo llevé a él porque él lo necesitaba, you know. Y me recuerdo de una predica. Y la predica que se me quedó aquí, and it changed my mindset. It changed everything. Era la llave del perdón. Mm-hmm. It, it, like, the, that title is never going to, you know, go away in my mind. Y la predica ese día era, you know, encontrar la llave del perdón. And then at the end of the message, regalaron llaves. Mm-hmm. And I kept my little key. And I went into that altar. And then después nos dieron unos papelitos. Y, y decían, you know, to escribir a la persona que perdonas. Mm-hmm. And, and I remember that day telling myself, the Maris, I forgive you. I forgive you for that year and a half that you almost lost everything. I forgive you, and I believe the promise and the purposes that God showed you mm. throughout your life. Mm. And I wrote myself a letter, and it sounds corny, and it sounds cheesy, and it sounds like, what on earth? Yeah, I wrote myself a letter, and um, I took it to the altar, because that's what they told us to do. Write that person, you know, your um, your letter, mm-hmm. and then take it to the altar, and and then we'll go from there. And that's what I did. I took that letter to myself to the altar and I took my key. And I remember telling my husband, you know what, I'm sorry. He's like, for what? 
I go, because I feel that the way that I've been feeling has detained your ministry five years. But from now on, I'm going to support you 100%. We're going to do this, and I'm done. Sis, literally, that next year, my husband started working with the youth. Sometimes what you're carrying is not just affecting you Mm -hmm. and the self-esteem of everybody that's going around, but it's also detaining blessings in places where God wants to take you. Because God already... He's over it. Yeah. He's seen you do the hard work mm-hmm. because the restoration process, that's where the real work starts. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't want to go through the restoration process. They just want to like put a bandaid on it and, and they want you to like just keep on going. No, you got to dig deep, yeah. take everything out, let God cleanse you and then start, mm-hmm. you know, from the beginning. And I thank God for that. Yo la, la verdad le doy gracias al Señor because he's been so patient with me. He was patient with me. And I remember telling my husband that. He's like, the money's like, what makes you think that, you know, you were a stopping block for me for five years? I'm like, that's how I feel. And like he says, no, you know, it, everything is God's timing. But in my heart, that's what I felt at that time. And from then, like, God's been so great. God's been so beautiful. And, and I've seen everything in a different way. Yes. And and that I do thank God about because it's so easy to see the negative parts. A lot of people hold on to the the stuff that they went through as a child, as being mm-hmm. a pastor's kid. I could say a lot of things that I went through as a pastor's kid, but I, I chose to like block them mm-hmm. and continue because the love that I had for God was so great. When I got to my te- teen years, yeah, there's a lot of negative stuff, but you know, when, when you're so into what you're doing and, and you love God so much and you allow the spirit to be inside of you and you allow him to filter everything that's going on, mm-hmm. you can continue. But like I said, it was the moment that I said something with my lips mm-hmm. that caused the whole separation of everything that God was already projecting in my life. But I think God, and, and, and if I could say something today, mm-hmm. is that God loves you know, um, a restoration story. Oh yes, He's all about that. We we see it time and time and time again in the Bible. So many prophets, so many women, so many people that, you know, God allowed them to go through their restoration process. But some people would rather not have gone through them. Mm-hmm. And they went to their graves without a restoration process because the process was too hard. I'm not saying it's, a, it's an easy... Re- process but to me personally that was the best thing that could have happened to me going back to it you know I I get asked do you regret this do you regret that there's no such thing as regret because if God's hands were there and it was him that brought me out of it Mm -hmm. I'm all for it you know do what you got to do break me again if you have to Mm -hmm. but I'm here for it for him to do whatever he wants in my life algo también muy clave creo y muy hermoso de su testimonio, es que dijo usted que es muy importante. No más porque fallaste una vez, no quiere decir, like, that doesn't make you a failure for the rest of your life. No más porque no funcionó una vez, no quiere decir que Dios tiene algo mejor y, y, y mayor para ti. Porque hay gente que se queda con eso. Ya fallé o esto no funcionó, and why am I going to try again? For what? Y no para allí. No tiene que parar allí. Uno hace esa, esa decisión. Si uno quiere parar allí o si uno quiere dejar que el Señor entre y haga, haga algo hermoso con lo que otros pueden ver como basura o como algo que... They, other people can see it as a failure, but God uses that for a greater purpose or for yeah. His glory. Pero te tienes que dejar usar y no puedes tener esa mentalidad de que no más porque no funcionó esta vez... You know, okay, it is what it is. Vamos a aprender esa lección. Um, y, a, y ahora nos vamos a poner las manos de Dios y Dios tiene algo mejor para nosotros. Porque como usted dijo, a veces uno mismo es el que se pierde las bendiciones. No es el Señor. Mm-hmm. You do that to yourself. You close the doors that God has opened for you. You close the windows that God has opened for you. And you get rid of the blessings that God has for you. It's not God. 
Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a Bible verse in Spanish. Ninguna arma forjada contra ti prosperará. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're that arma forjada. Yeah. Well, we're that, we're that, you know, step in stone that doesn't allow us to go forward. We, we're that person. You know, and God is showing you, look, but I hold you, but I brought you, but I did this, but look at this, but look at that. But you're like, no, Jesus, but look at this, you know, and, and I thank God for that. I really do thank God for that. I'm, I mean, what I've had liked to not have, you know, pages in my story that I wish I could just tear out and throw away and act like they didn't, you know, act like they don't belong there mm -hmm. or act like they didn't exist. Of course, who doesn't? We all have chapters in our lives that we wish we could have done better. Oh, yes. But what I've learned is that sometimes those pages that you don't like are now literally the guideline to someone else to show yes. them, hey, look, this is what was done. This is what I did. I put my you know, confidence and, and all my insecurities to God. And, and we did this and that and that and that. You can do it, too. Oh, absolutely. And I think that sometimes as Christians, we want to like, you know, flip the page. Like, and, esta no. Yeah, esta no. Like, can we just like, Ignora esa. you know what I mean? Skip down. <laughs> it's like, what yeah. happened here? Nothing. <laughs> just skip, skip you right know? over it. And now that I have teen girls, I talk to them and I talk to them very honestly. You know, mm -hmm. you know, what are the things that brought me to this? What is this? What is that? And, and I talked to my kids. I'm like, baby girl, I've been through things, so you don't go through them. Mm, yes. You know? And if you, you if you allow me to, if I see red flags, I'm going to tell you. Yes. And like I told them, if you allow me to. But if you don't allow me, you know what I mean? Like, I, I yeah. can't help you. I can't help you no there. Puedes obligar. No, I can't yeah. help you there. And I'll tell any young girl, I'm like, child, we all have a redemption story. Yes. You know, we all have a redemption story. We all have a beautiful story that can be written if we just give God that pen and be like, okay, God, you know what? I can't do this. You know, I messed up. I need you to continue to write this story because clearly me getting that pen and trying to write it myself, not working. it's not a good chapter. Mm -hmm. But if you take over and I allow you to take over, then I know that we're going to be okay. Me and everything else that comes behind me. Because yes. we're attached to so many things, to relationships, to kids, to so many things. And and I think if we would walk that way, knowing that we have a lot of people that, you know, are rooting for us mm -hmm. and are wanting us to do good and are really hoping for the best for you, then we would try harder. Yes. I honestly think we would, but sometimes, you know, we just give in because we think that, yeah, ya se acabo. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> Your no. story is done. No. But I thank God, you know, for my PK story. My PK story is different from many people. You know, like at the end of the day, I love Jesus and I love what he's done. And and it's it's a very particular story because now I'm raising pastor's kids. You know, and I married one, yeah. <laughs> which is very odd. But I mean, I thank God for all of it. You know, we we see the ins and the outs. You know, we don't do what our parents used to do in some things. And, and we just see things differently. And I love that. I yes. love that about, you know, this particular thing that God allowed us to live. Amen. Well, Sister Lamaris, thank you so much for... Uh, sharing your testimony por decir su testimonio con nosotros. Uh, yo creo que, y es importante uno hablar de su testimonio. No nomás lo bueno, pero lo que la gente puede, decir, puede ver como malo, porque eso es lo que le va a ayudar a alguien más. Um, y gracias por ser tan abierta y por no tener ya temor, porque hay, hay personas que tienen temor y no tengan temor. De, de decir su testimonio. Um, I was just telling a young lady not too long ago, you know, tu testimonio es lo que glorifica al Señor. En, en tu testimonio es como Dios se glorifica en lo que Él puede hacer en la vida de alguien. Y por eso um, le agradecemos tanto por estar aquí con nosotros. Y um, just thank you, Sister Damaris, for being here with us. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, activados. <laughs> Gracias por sintonizarse con nosotros. Esperamos de ser de bendición para cada uno de ustedes. Por favor, dejen sus comentarios, dejen sugerencias. Nos encanta 
escuchar de ustedes y no se olviden de darnos un like, suscríbanse y síganos en las redes sociales, estamos en Instagram y en Facebook y una vez más les agradecemos a cada uno de ustedes. Activados. <música>